Hello, hello. Welcome back again to another video. And today we're going to be going over Spookifier, which is a hack the box ETF challenge that's currently retired. Currently, it's rated uh, super easy. So I'll, let, I'll teach you guys how to go over this real quick. And also, I have my links down below. So you guys can get a discount off when you guys sign up for either Hack the Box Academy or Hack the Box Regular. So you guys could just click on that and let's begin so first things first we get this web page and it's called uh, name spook fire that's the first thing we see and it says enter your your new halloween name here and then just type your name and then it gets outputted in i guess four different like uh, fonts so at first i thought probably this is xss but like to do xss there's no like bop there's like no um there's like a no bot payload or like no uh, no bot or like no uh, no admin bar or something to catch it. and I just tried to like a simple XSS payload so I'll just try this image source it might work it might not let's test it out real quick and uh, I guess it worked but like I guess this since this is vulnerable to XSS that's one thing to keep in mind but why guess it all because if we look at the box we have files that we could download so I downloaded the files and then I took a quick look at it and then I went inside the the files. You cat the Docker file to see what's going on. Looks like it's just a Flask application, so that gives us an idea of what the project is built. We go to the challenge application and it's just cat main. So nothing else, but what I get, the first thing I see, I guess that ca catches my mind is the Mako templates. So that looks like it's part, it's using Mako, a template agent. So when you think of templates, you think of SSTI server side template injection. First thing that comes in my head, but we'll just keep on checking the application just to be sure. Cat util, change font. So so it looks like it's yeah from i guess from the looks like it looks like it looks like to be uh i guess a, a template injection for the most part template import for mako so it looks like it'd be a temp a template injection for mako so i looked upon it and i first went to uh hackbooks tricks xyz and control f oh mako so with mako i guess usually you will do uh yeah, this will be like the payload for the most part and if you go pillow all things as well so usually for server side template injection most of most of the time is just two uh two curly braces and then you do it seven times seven just to test out if anything runs and nothing happened but for i guess for mako on their case you just all have only have to put one and put a dollar sign in between so if you run this we should see, boom, it yeah, activifies it as 49. So now we look at this. I didn't use this payload because this gave me a server error. So I will just copy this and just like, just paste it right here. I'll just probably get a server error. Yeah, internal server error. But we have an idea. This is probably the way method. This is probably the way, this is the way. Anyway, so we look at all of this and we try it. Let's try these commands for the most part. So we'll try this. So it's gonna read out ID. And if you guys don't know what ID does, I'll just open up a new terminal. ID. It tells you like the the group IDs of the system. So we want to see something similar to this if we were to type on the Flask application. So let's go back right here. Let's see if something pops out. Nothing really popped out on our end. We just see a zero. The reason why, after looking over this, it seems that. When you run system, for the most part, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be captured or returned. It executes the command ID, but it does not capture or returns the output to the template. So what we have to do, so we could return the output of whatever we're running as is first, um, do, uh, copy, copy the payload, but change this to process open. 
P open, which is does the same thing. It, it runs whatever it's written inside the command. P open. And then if we want to read, if we want the template to read whatever comes out, we just have to type dot read at the end. So it executes the command and retrieves the output. So the P open executes whatever command and then dot read, it retrieves the output and makes it so that we can see it. So I guess that's the difference between. So if we were to try this, we will see something similar to what we have right here. So now I guess I guess like how we usually do it, we just need to find the uh, change the command this time from ID to LS to see where the flag is at exactly in this. So let's go back right here, copy this, paste it, system, except the system we want P open, process open, then dot read. And then let's check ls to see where we're at. We'll see if there's anything inside this directory. Application and run.py. So that's not where we want to go. So let's, uh, I, should probably, I think I have to place it. So let's try going the directory back. Let's try opening, going at the very beginning. So p open. Let's list out all the contents at the root directory. Then dot read. Now, if we try this, we see app, bin, dev, etc. flag.txt. This is what we're trying to get. So, if we go back right here, oh, change this to p open and then cat flag.txt. Then dot read, we should get the flag. And boom, we get the flag for this box. This is a simple, very easy template injection um, lab. Uh, I'll leave down the write-up down below that I found that kind of helped me with this process and I'll link down the payload of all things. So you guys can take a look at it. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video and that's it, peace.